Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Department of Mineral Resources and Energy has initiated a process to procure 2,000 megawatts of electricity capacity to fill an emergency supply gap identified in the Integrated Resource Plan of 2019. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss this development. Hi, Terence. I should know. What is the background to this risk mitigation independent power producer procurement program? Well, the background is really South Africa's ongoing load shedding and the risk that load shedding is going to continue for a couple of years yet, given that Eskom's uh, plant uh, availability has fallen dramatically in recent years due to under maintenance. And there's a process now at Eskom to try and repair that plant but it is going to take time to get the energy availability factor back up. And when we do recover the energy availability factor, we might find it's off a lower base because some of those units might never be returned to nameplate. So we have this risk of load shedding and then the integrated resource plan that was published in October last year identified that there was this immediate gap of about 2,000 megawatts. We then went into that very bad period of load shedding in December last year, including stage six, where Eskom was saying that the immediate gap was probably closer to 5,000 megawatts. Be that as it may, uh, the MRE and the IPP office have been preparing this uh, bid documentation to fill this gap, which they call an emergency, well, it's been known as emergency gap, but there hasn't been much <laughs> urgency shown. I mean, we nearly a year on from the RP publication. And we finally, uh, this week, have seen the publication of the Risk Mitigation Power Purchase Procurement Program. What sort of technologies are likely to be procured and what are the risks? Well, the, the technologies, the, the tender document itself uh, is uh, calling for, it's a tele technology agnostic document, so it's not prescriptive at all. All it does say is that the power must be dispatchable. So. We know that, for instance, wind and solar are weather dispatched or self dispatch. So, for them to enter this process, they need to be coupled with some sort of storage technology. And it'll be interesting to see whether some of the bids might include sort of a PV battery storage or a wind battery storage solution. But it, it really is technologies like gas engines, gas to power, potentially power ships, those sort of uh, solutions that could be self-dispatch immediately. The big risk here is what will be the cost of this uh, electricity, these bids. So we know that this is emergency power and when you have the word emergency, uh, generally the, the cost or the price of that power goes up. We even saw that in our PPP, PPE procurement during the COVID crisis, during those early periods where there was a supply demand imbalance the prices were very, very high. So there is this risk because we know that South Africa doesn't only have a supply problem or a supply imbalance. South Africa also has a, electric, a growing electricity price problem or tariff problem, which is reflected in either the closure of energy intensive businesses, or as we can see the, the, the defection from the Eskom system, more and more people where they can afford it are, are self-supplying. And then obviously the other sign that we have a price problem is high levels of electricity theft, um, and it, which at some points is actually putting huge uh, pressure on the system. So I suppose the risk here is, you know, one, we, we do need to get solutions uh, that can be uh, into the system quickly. And that's also up for debate whether uh, whether emergency can be seen in supplying only in June 2022, that's also uh, questionable. But uh, be that as it may, uh, if we do secure these technologies, at what cost will that come uh, to South African consumers? Because ultimately, this will be a pass through to South African consumers uh, and we will pay. What does this bidding process tell us about how the DMRE intends tackling South Africa's power problem? I think both the DMRE and the regulator, the National Energy Regulator of South Africa, have shown extreme inflexibility, given that we were told that we had this big gap of, of at least 2,000 megawatts all the way back in October last year. To the fact that we took this long 
to begin a procurement process is quite amazing. It's quite outrageous in the context of ongoing load shedding. But they, they just followed their normal processes. And in the end, NERSA, in fact, uh, circumvented its processes by not going to a public hearing. We know that we could have avoided this entirely if we had consistently procured uh, least cost power. Since 2014, we have not had any bid windows open by the IPP office. This is the first. So it's been five years, full five years, where we've had no bidding at all in South Africa amid a power crisis. So that, that is really uh, the root cause, is that we haven't been adding enough capacity to the system to replace not, only, not, not what was going to be officially decommissioned, but was what was unofficially decommissioned through the lack of maintenance at Eskom. And there's, there are very big questions about whether Eskom's EAF will ever recover. And if it does, whether it recovers off a large nameplate or a smaller nameplate. So, the, so this, this gap could have been avoided. It is now an expensive gap to fill through, this, uh, through potentially hefty contracts. But I think the lesson here is that we need to get into a consistent procurement phase. And hopefully, given that we've now started and the bid documentation has been released and that uh, tenders should be in, uh, in November, the preferred bidder should be announced in December. We will then use this to kickstart a consistent round of procurement out of the RPP office, which had a very successful start uh, and has been a very, very effective procurement agency in South Africa. So I think if we're going to take any positive out of it, at least we have started the ball rolling again. Uh, but we need to know that there are other levers that will have to be uh, pulled. Uh, this emergency power is only, only going to arrive in if we're lucky, in June 2022. So we need to look at the other levers, which the, the fastest and cheapest lever is self-generation. We are seeing some movement, but again, at a very lethargic pace from both the DMRE and the regulator on liberalizing that market and facilitating that. But we are hearing good noises, especially from the mining industry around self-generation. And then, obviously, we need to get, uh, get ESKIMs a maintenance program up, to, up and running and to start seeing some fruit from that. But I think what South Africans must expect is that the risk of load shedding is going to prevail for some time while we try to fill this gap. And if we don't pull all the levers, that gap is going to remain quite large for quite long. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.